Nine veteran activists have been convicted in Hong Kong on charges of unlawful assembly. They have been convicted for their role in organizing one of the biggest democracy protests to engulf the city in 2019. Seven of the activists were found guilty by Hong Kong's district court today of organizing and knowingly participating in an unauthorized assembly, while two others had previously pled guilty. Those convicted include 82-year-old barrister Martin Lee, who helped launch the city's largest opposition Democratic Party in the 1990s and is often called Hong Kong's father of democracy. Also convicted is media tycoon Jimmy Lai and five others who had pled guilty, who had pled not guilty. The historical significance of the August 18 with 1.7 million people on the march and we are really honored to be part of it and we are also proud that we can be even if we are, have to go to jail for it. With the dream of an individual, we have to talk about it. We have to express it to public so that we could co-work together and make our dream come true. But too bad, the freedom of information, the freedom of expression are now banned in Hong Kong. And that does nobody any good. It is only a deterrent of our progress. Prosecutors accuse the activists of turning an approved assembly in the city's Victoria Park into an illegal march to Central. Their sentencing will be decided at a later date. For more updates about these recent charges, Richard Kimber now joins us live from Hong Kong with all the latest developments. Richard, thanks so much for joining us. Now, nine veteran activists have been convicted in Hong Kong on charges of unlawful assembly. One of them, even an 82-year-old, referred to as the father of democracy in Hong Kong. Tell us more about the charges and the punishment that they face. That's right. These nine are really some of the most well-known faces in the pro-democracy movement, or at least those uh, most well-known faces who have not either already been charged or who have not already left Hong Kong, since so many high-profile activists have been victim to one of those two scenarios. So these remaining nine, some of the most uh, prominent figures in the democracy movement, as you mentioned, Martin Lee, the founding chairman of the opposition Democratic Party. Many call him the father of democracy. Jimmy Lai, the media tycoon, the head of the most outspoken anti-government newspaper in Hong Kong seven other high-profile pro-democracy former lawmakers in this city. Some of the most well-known figures that you'll have seen on the streets every time whenever there's been a large protest in recent years. Right. So really quite significant today's court ruling. They've all been um, convicted of organizing and taking part in an unauthorized assembly. It's a slight technicality because the police had approved a large-scale gathering in August of 2019 to take place in one of the city's largest parks. But what then happened is so many people turned up that that large gathering then turned into a march which had not been authorized and these nine have been convicted of turning that march uh, into a much larger scale protest that then headed towards the government headquarters. They've denied those charges but nevertheless they've been convicted. Right now Richard, China continues its crackdown on dissent in Hong Kong despite international condemnation. So what kind of legal resources are now available to these activists as of now? Well, it's looking very difficult for activists like these to really seek any kind of recourse. There have been high-level sanctions imposed on top Chinese and Hong Kong officials from the US, from the UK and from the European Union. There have been joint statements of condemnation from all of those countries and indeed from Australia, New Zealand, Canada. It's really mounting up the amount of international pressure on China and the Hong Kong government over this, but it's not really having any noticeable effect. Just this week, there have been high-level electoral reforms imposed in Hong Kong, which have totally reshaped the electoral framework here and basically given Beijing much more influence and control over the electoral process. So despite all of these efforts from the international community, there's no real sign of any change taking place from the strategy from both Beijing and the Hong Kong government to try to put a stop to this type of political opposition. Right, Richard, my final question for you. What is really now the future of the pro-democracy movement in Hong Kong as it stands as of now? Well, with high-profile activists like these being jailed or at least uh, leaving Hong Kong over fear of being jailed, there's very little expectation that in the coming months and certainly in the coming years we'll see anything like what we saw in the last couple of years with regards to large-scale public street protests. That seems to be a distant memory now after the introduction of the national security law. Instead, what's happening is many of those high-profile activists that have left the city are now lobbying for more international pressure, the like of which I mentioned before, sanctions on high-level officials, more international 
international pressure and potentially, they hope, even stronger sanctions that could involve trade or economic pressure on China over what it's doing in Hong Kong. But as I say, no sign so far that any of that is having any effect and China is rebuffing all of this criticism, reminding the international world that its perspective is that these are internal affairs of China and they are not open for international discussion anymore. Right, Richard. Thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast with all the latest developments. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.